If you can, open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 22. This morning, I want, to, I want to speak this word called take this cup. Take this cup. I just want to tell you, I, 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 I don't know how, how much God is going to allow you to receive, but as I was preparing for this message last night, I was just absolutely, I was absolutely floored. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't contain how much or how thankful I am to the Lord Jesus Christ. I love Jesus so much for what he's done for me. Luke 22, verse 39, it says, Then he accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his, his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. There was a cup that Jesus had to drink. And he knew the cup that he was about to drink, and the cup is called the cup of suffering. So he took our cup. He took death for our sins. He knew the pain that he was going to have to endure. He knew the shame that he was going to have to endure. He knew the suffering that he was going to do. So even though he, he knew everything, in the garden, he was having a conversation with the Father. He said, if there's any other way than for me to drink this cup, is there any other way that mankind could be redeemed? That you and me can be saved? Is there any other way except for this cup of suffering? It was before him. He held it. He knew he had to drink it all. But yet he went to the Father at the last hour knowing that he's getting ready to go through the suffering, to drink the cup of suffering. And he cried out to the Father where it was such agony knowing the things that he was going to go through such agony knowing the shame and the pain he was going to go through. And he cried out to God. The Bible talks about that his, his blood began to fill, his sweat began to fill with blood. And he sweated blood. That's agony. That's suffering. But yet he said, not my will, your will. In other words, he, he said, okay, Lord, Father, since there's no other way, then this cup of suffering, I'm going to drink it. And so he took the cup of suffering. Now go with me to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, beginning in four, verse 4. It says, yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. There are five cups of suffering Jesus had to drink. The first cup of suffering they had to drink was a cup of piercing. Now I got this, this spike here. The Bible says that he was nailed to a cross. Some people believe it was in his hands that the, 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 the nail, that the spike went through. Some people believe it was more of his wrists. But it went through him and into the cross in his hands and in his feet he was pierced not only was he pierced he was hung so his entire weight of his body was weighing down on those piercing 
and he endured that pain and that suffering every hour he was, and every moment he was on the cross. It's one thing to be wounded in the body, flesh, but another to allow the, the pain of the hanging on the cross. That was the suffering that he went through. That was the cup of piercing that Jesus paid for you and for me. He was pierced, but yet he drank it. He, he, the Bible says that, that no one could take his life. He laid it down. So when the cup of suffering was placed before him, he said, piercing, I will drink it. And the Bible says that he was pierced for one reason, our rebellion. Our rebellion. Our rebellion telling God that we don't need him. Our rebellion when God begins to direct, wants to, to call us to his kingdom, but we reject him. Our rebellion from the time that Adam and Eve were on the, on, in the garden and they, they rejected the word of the Lord that said, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The thing about rebellion, there's no cure for rebellion. Rebellion is something that the only, the only answer to rebellion is death. So Jesus said, I'll die for them. He was pierced for our rebellion. Every time we, we've told God no, Jesus paid the price for every one of those. The Bible says he was, cru he was crushed for our sins. They talk about a crushing as it, it, a breaking down a complete destruction. Every sin that we, we've done, every sin that we, that we were acted upon, every one of them had a payment, but Jesus paid for it. His, his body was crushed for our sins. That was a, cut, a suffering that he had to pay, but he drank it. The other cup, the third cup, was a cup of beating for our brokenness. They beat him. They spat upon him. They cursed him. He was beaten so that we could be whole. We were broken. We were separated from God. But, but, but Jesus paid the price so that we could be, he was, he was beaten so that we could be made whole. The next cup. The fourth cup was the cup of whipping. For our physical healing. You know, going back to beating, there are a lot of people that have mental diseases. Something happened in their life. They weren't like that, but something happened in their life, and now they have an issue. They have something that's keeping them from, from going forward. A dramatic event, an accident, an abuse. And now they look through the, these, these eyes of, I was abused, I was broken, I was taken advantage of, and now they operate in fear. They operate, in, they're not normal. They, 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 they can't get into any type of peace, any type of joy, because they're still living at, in the past where that moment that they were, they were taken advantage of, broken, or went through that severe accident. Maybe it was something in wartime. That they're, su that they're suffering from. But the word of God says that Jesus, Jesus was, was, was beaten for our brokenness. So that means that, that we could be whole. We, could be, we don't have to deal with that. We can look to Jesus as the one that paid the price. We don't have to pay double. He paid. He took the cup of suffering for me. I don't have to suffer from this by, by what Jesus did for me. I'm free. He took the cup of suffering. And the cup of whipping for my healing. Some of us seen the movie of, uh, of the Passion where, where Jesus was whipped. But he was whipped for our, our sicknesses, our diseases. He paid the price. He, he was whipped. He was, the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. In other words, we were healed 2,000 years ago. So he took the cup of suffering so that we don't have to suffer from sickness and disease. Even though sickness and disease might attack our body, we don't have to accept it as that, that's the final outcome. We have to preach to our body what Jesus has done for us and tell our body to get in line with the word of God. Amen. To turn back the clock. 
to the moment when Jesus paid the price and said, devil, you can't touch my body. Sickness and disease, you can't be upon me. I don't accept the flu. I don't accept the cold. I don't accept the cough. You will not touch me. You will not be in my house. You will not be on my children. You will not be in my home. By his stripes, we are healed. He took it. He drank it. By his stripes, we are healed. And I want to talk about the fifth cup. And this one is the, this one was the, the, the most, this one crushes me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, go there. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one says, "For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us." The fifth cup that Je- of suffering that Jesus drank was the cup that made him into sin. It was not the cup that not a cup of sin that he did sin he became sin his very nature his very identity was changed when he drank of that cup he became sin sin Bible says the wages of sin is death in Mark chapter 15, verse 34, I'm going to read it to you. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he became sin. God had to turn his eyes from him and let him go and release him. Now, I don't know how long you've been saved. Some of you have been saved for years. Some of you just got saved. But can you imagine a moment where God turns his eyes away from you, draws back his presence away from you, and lets you completely go back to the old man, as if you didn't know, if you never had a relationship with him, as if he no longer loves you. Like a father rejects a son. He said, get out of here. I don't want you in my house. I, re- I, I, I renounce even, even knowing you. You don't belong in my family. You're nowhere. I reject you. Because that's the severity of the punishment of sin. That Jesus became, he became sin where God could no longer look at him. And God could no longer be in his his presence. God had to let him go to be all alone and take a step back and turn his back upon him. And all Jesus, you know, Jesus, he suffered everything. He was glad to give his body. He was glad to do all those things, knowing that was going to bring us redemption. But the one thing that caused them to cry out, the one thing that is too much for him, was a separation from his father. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sin caused God to abandon Jesus.
Hallelujah. Go to Luke chapter 22. He did that for you. He did that for me. He drank the cup of suffering. Became sin. Died on the cross. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. Sin. Dead. No longer alive. No longer had any control over him. Sin stayed dead in the grave. And the punishment of sin stayed in the grave. He rose glorified. Restored back into relationship with the Father. Righteous King. Lord of Lords. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift of everlasting life to anyone who will believe in him. Because as soon as you believe in him, the payment for the cup of suffering was paid for your life. He became sin and was rejected by God, so now today we are accepted by God. We're part of the beloved, we're part of the family because now we are no longer ourselves. As soon as we believe in Jesus, we now are born again, children of God. We are now one with Christ. What he did for the cross becomes the payment that I paid for my sins and for my shame. He did it all at the cross. His payment covers me. Not just me, but the Bible says that for all of mankind, for everyone that calls him King of kings and Lord of lords, Savior. Everyone that accepts him, his payment becomes their payment. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm with him. I'm with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I think I got all my tears out. Amen. Luke 22, verse 20 says, After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant. Between God and his people. I was lying. I'm so crying. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. So here's the new cup. The cup of righteousness. The cup of the new covenant. That's what he calls it. And this cup, is made for you to drink from. The cup of suffering was the one that Jesus drank from for you and for me. But this is the cup that Jesus is giving you to drink from. This is the cup of his new covenant, his new way of living. No longer under the curses and the pain and the sins of man, but now set free by the blood of the Lamb. No longer broken and destroyed and defeated with life, but victorious in Christ. The cup of the new covenant, this is yours. Sealed by the blood of Jesus. You, 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 you get to just freely drink. Amen. How many of you all know what this cup has for you? Hallelujah. And so, the cup, the first part of it, the first uh, the first thing we get to drink is the cup of salvation. All my sins have been put to death by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Can you say that with me? All my sins have been put to death by the blood of Jesus. Now, you have to understand, sin is not an action. Some of you are saying, well, the action of sin, I did this. That's not sin. That is just the fruit of sin that's operating in a person's life. But sin is not an action. Sin was a being. It was was a force. It was a control over all of mankind. But when you gave your life to Jesus, sin had to take his hands off of you. Now you have the power to take authority over it and say no. 
I'm not going to do that. No, that's not going to control me. No, I'm not going to live for that no more. Sin shall not reign in my body. The only control sin has over you is the control that you give it. But now Jesus has given you the power to tell it no. If you will put your foot down saying, no, I will not be reigned and ruled over that. God is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I will not allow anything to rule me except for the love of God. Amen. You'll see, your deliverance will come quickly. You deliver, as soon as you start making war against the, the action of sin, you'll see that those actions will begin to stop. Amen. Amen. Say, I have victory I by the blood of Jesus Christ. The second cup is the cup of peace. The cup of peace. In 1 John, in, in John chapter 14, verse, John chapter 14, verse 14, uh, uh, verse 27. John 14, verse 27. says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And no, it's not peace because everything's happening good around you. It's not peace because you're making the right grades, making the right money, and got the right person liking you. It's peace that reigns and rules inside your heart as a gift that Jesus has put inside you. And you begin to claim it. Lo, I have peace in Jesus' name. It could be war all around you, but I got peace in me. You, it, the storm might come. The waves might be, might be tossing you to and fro, but you'll be sleeping on the bottom of the boat with Jesus. Amen. And so that's the second cup of, of, of the new covenant we have with them peace amen the third cup is the cup of joy everybody say joy joy, joy the, the, it's because the holy spirit is with us the bible says in his presence is fullness of joy fullness of joy someone says i'm just not happy well you're not with jesus you're not in the holy spirit if you were in the holy spirit you would be happy I'm tired of all this stuff. I'm, I don't know. I don't have any peace in my life. I don't have any joy. Come, come, come. Drink. Come drink. What kind of drink is? It's the new wine of the Holy Ghost. You come and drink. You spend time with God. The only reason why you don't have peace and joy is because you're not spending time with God. I've yet to know someone who spent time with God that, that doesn't walk out happy. Does it carry around joy in their heart? Even yourself, if you judge yourself, if you ever find yourself, man, I'm just being defeated, all these things are happening. Why me? Well, maybe it's because you haven't been spending time with the Lord. I go to church, yes, but you show up late. That really does matter. It really does. It really does. You say, well, pastor, why does it matter? I showed up. I was just, you know, 20 minutes late. Yeah, but the Bible says that, that uh, we're supposed to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You didn't put your garment on. You're still naked trying to get that stuff off of you when your praise could have broken off that stuff off of you. But pastor, you don't know what my mother-in-law did. It don't matter. The praise handles that too. But pastor, you don't know my wife. She just knows how to put them. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's why you should learn how to praise God even in your home. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, you set me free. Thank you, Lord, you set me free. My, my aunt was one of the first, was the first person that got saved. And, and she, she would see my, my father and my uncle smoking weed in the bottom, in the, in the basement, and she would have to walk through there to get to the, to the door as she was going to church, and they would make fun of her. They'd say, oh, you just love the pastor. Oh, you know, they'd make fun of her, you holy woman type of thing, and they'd be smoking weed and laughing at her. And, and she would come back, and she would go, walk into that knowing that they were going to make fun of her, and she would, she would say, Satan, get out of my way because I'm coming through. You can't stop these feet of mine from walking over you. I can see you standing there in your misery, but I know a man somewhere that has set me free. She was saying that every time, and, and they, they didn't realize that she was calling them the devil, and she was just walking through that thing. <laughs> amen. There's joy in the presence of the Holy Ghost, amen? And so you have to go there. It's, you have to drink of it, amen? Spending time with the Lord, drink the cup, amen? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, drink the cup. 
of the Holy Ghost. And then the, very, the, the, the next cup, the fourth cup is the cup of righteousness. Cup of righteousness. I am now restored into the family of God. I am a son of God. When I drink the, righteous, the cup of righteousness, I'm claiming the blood of Jesus to wash all my sins away where I'm completely righteous before God. So now God can look at, my, at me and I can spend time in his presence, welcomed not as a stranger, but as a son. Have you ever done something to someone or someone did something to you? And when they get around you, there's an uncomfortable feeling of being in the presence. Maybe you've done something to, dis, to, to make your parents not happy or something in your workplace where the boss shows up and you know that there's going to be something going on with the presence because of something either you did or they did. There was a man that, that I was just spending time with and he thought that I was angry at him for something when I didn't have any anger towards him except love. That's all I had to him. But just the very thought of me not being happy with him, for almost two years, he didn't talk to me. For two years, he thought there was something that I was against him in. I called him. I reached out to him. He never answered my calls. He never got around me. So finally, one day, he calls me up. And he, said, he said, Pastor, I just need to apologize. I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for doing that. I said, Brother, I, didn't, I was never angry at you. I was never. I loved you. I was trying to reach out to you. But for two years, the very thought of being not in right relationship with me kept them away. That's what happens when we don't, have, when we don't drink of the cup of righteousness. We think that God doesn't want to hear our prayers. We think that Father doesn't have a plan and purpose for us. We think that God cannot use us. We think that there's something that's in between us and him that we can't spend time in his presence. Yes, we hear the word of God that we could go boldly before the throne of grace and, and find help for in, in our time of need, but we don't think that we could enter in because we feel ashamed. We allow the devil to steal our righteousness by stealing the thoughts of who we are in Christ. Every time the devil tells you you're not righteous, you hold up the blood. Nope, the blood washes all my sins away. The devil says, well, what about what you did last week? The blood took care of that too. What about what you did yesterday? The blood took care of that as well. You have been made righteous. Not only have you been made righteous, but you've been adopted into the family of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Luke chapter, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you, re you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father! Just like Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now the Spirit of God inside of you cries out, Abba, Father. Not God, you're away from me, it's separate from me, I can't get to you, but I got a daddy, I got a father, and he loves me. And so my prayer is going to be, hallelujah, Father, thank you. I ask you for help in this area. Father, I thank you. I thank you, your presence with me. Father, I thank you that I'm your favorite son of all the sons in this world. I'm your favorite. You like me more than Johnny. <laughs> I'm always going to figure. Or you like me more than Rio Grande. <laughs> You just walk in this relationship, knowing who you are, knowing that, knowing that there's nothing wrong, there's, no, there's nothing in between you and God. How many of you are God's favorite? How many of you are your daddy's favorite? I, I'm my daddy's favorite, amen. Hallelujah. All because of the cup that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to heaven. Just begin to thank him. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for, for paying the price. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Lord?